Hi everyone and welcome to this Academy Bite Size module. I'm Richard Norris, Bupa's Head of SME and Specialist. And at Bupa we're passionate about women's health. And today we're talking about period health. And I have with me Dr. Petra Simic, who's been a, a NHS doctor for more than 20 years. So, Petra, shall we get going on our yes, questions? Yes, Richard. Around 80% of women experience period pain at some stage, with 5 to 10% of women finding the pain severe enough to disrupt their life. Petra, can you talk us through some of the symptoms people may experience? Um, Richard, so it's important to talk about periods. Women experience these every month, and uh, even a normal menstrual period will have a degree of discomfort related to it for, for many women, whether that be abdominal cramping or back pain, or just even the onset of the period and heavy bleeding for the first couple of days. However, there are women who have underlying conditions that cause their periods to be really quite difficult, such as endometriosis, uh, around 1 in 10 women have endometriosis, many of which don't know they have it. That can give quite painful periods, particularly in the days leading up to, to the period starting. You can have problems with fibroids, which can give you very heavy periods, or, or polyps, which can do the same. There are conditions such as PMDD, which is a premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which is where you can have really quite dramatic changes in both your mood and emotions in the time leading up to your period. Menstrual migraine. The list is quite long of of problems women can have around their periods. Um, so you can see that the time of the month is not quite as simple as it might seem for mm. some women, and for some it's really quite life affecting. So that, that is quite a long list of, uh, of challenges in there, and I, I'm really keen, particularly as a, a male leader, to find out what I can do to help. But also, um, almost a quarter of women take time of work because of their period. And unfortunately, more than a third lie about the reason for their absence for fear of embarrassment or judgment. So how important is it that organisations and managers normalise discussions around period health in the workplace? Well, um, as you said, Richard, it's a long list and we know it affects many women um, and more women are working than ever before. Um, I think in the UK we have established that we think heavy and painful periods uh, make up for around 6 million six sick days a year, um, which is a huge number. And although we can think about the impact to a business, I think if we just take a step back and think about the impact to an individual to mm. be unwell enough to take that much time off work on a regular, potentially monthly basis, you can imagine how disruptive that is to yeah. someone's life. Um, it's really interesting that I see many women with period problems who don't attend my surgery because they have period problems. Mm. So they come for other reasons. A really good example is I feel tired all the time, doctor, I'm exhausted. Um, I'll ask them their symptoms, oh, everything's fine, and then we'll get the blood test back and discover they're anemic. Mm. And when we explore it, they're anemic because their periods are so heavy, yet they had accepted their heavy periods as just a variation of normal for them. Mm. Um, and it might be that their family uh, so they've spoken to their mum while she had heavy periods and their sister. So they've sort of normalised what actually is quite disruptive uh, menstrual health. Um, so organisations are really quite at risk of losing talent during that, this time, you know, yeah. if they're not recognising that, is there anything else they can do? Um, and I think it's about supporting the conversation around period health to start breaking down the taboo because I, I'm privileged enough to have spoken to thousands of women about their periods because of the job that I do. Mm. So uh, I do that in my consultations. But when I think about it, I haven't had lots of conversations with my friends or my relatives about their periods. And I think until women start being more open about their experience of menstruation, it's going to be hard for us to find the women that are suffering probably in silence. So our job as thought leaders, as businesses, as organisations is to kind of join together to kind of break this taboo and start getting rid of the shame or embarrassment. This is a completely normal function yeah. and, and we need to get better at being comfortable talking about it. Right. So as a manager being open, being empathetic, creating the right sort of environment and showing some flexibility. Yeah, and I think showing some interest in it. And yeah. I, I, I do think generally um, male managers are, are almost more interested in it because they know less about it. And sometimes being a female manager might not make it more, more beneficial. Mm. They may not be more sympathetic or empathetic because if your female manager has been dealing with really difficult periods for 10 years of their career, are they going to be really em empathetic to the next person? Mm. Or are they going to say, well, I... I cope with it, you should just yeah. carry on. So I don't think, again, this isn't 
a, a women's issue. This is just a human, a oh, human really issue. Good. And I think yeah. that empathy, that listening, and that kind of open-mindedness will go really far in this space. Okay, great, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next one. So, um, we know that women face challenges when accessing help and support for period health. Petra, can you talk us through some of the common barriers women face? So I think, Richard, the, the, the number one main thing is really a lack of awareness of women that they may be struggling unduly, they may have symptoms that might be manageable or treatable. So I think lack of awareness is really important. How can we help women to recognise when they could have a better quality of life if their period health was managed better? Um, there's embarrassment and, and shame that goes with it. Um, I also think there's normalisation amongst families where people just accept quite difficult periods because everyone's had them. Um, and a real lack of awareness of the kind of treatment options there are available. So um, for lots of women, they kind of seem to think, well, this is just it, isn't it? Every month, this is how life, I have to take mm. two days off of work and I have flooding and you know, I can't go to the supermarket. And when you sit down with them and explain that there are treatment options available, they kind of seem surprised. So I mm. think there is a big awareness piece. Um, I think in terms of in a workplace, if you are noticing regular absenteeism, then I think it's important that you always ask what's mm. going on if you notice a pattern and if it's period related, you are going to see a pattern yeah. uh, in, in most cases. So you would do what you normally would and, and have quite open conversations. Um, I think the other thing to think about is that where we'd all been based in offices, I suspect that was quite a barrier for women that were having period problems. The move towards hybrid and flexible working will be really great for women that are having period mm. problems, but might actually make them not seek help because they mm. find that's much, they can kind of go, go along for longer without yeah. getting help. So in some ways, flexible working, although helpful, might actually mean it's harder to spot mm. when people are struggling with their periods and it's impacting on their life. Yeah, sure, okay. Great, thank you. So, uh, our final question. 87% of people who menstruate have experienced stress or anxiety in the workplace because of their period and feel male colleagues may be judgmental. What can organisations practically do to address how they support period health in the workplace? I mean, that's quite a shocking statistic, isn't yeah. it? That that's, you know, the majority of people who menstruate experiencing those kind of negative kind of connotations mm. to it. I guess the first thing you'd want to do is really address what's going on in the workplace and that there is no particularly negative mm. or yeah, toxic things yeah. going on. Um, periods are a very personal thing and they're very private and I'm not sure it's something that you should necessarily be talking to someone on an individual basis mm. about because it's still quite a big taboo and people feel very protective over their health information yeah. quite rightly. But as an organisation there's you could have conversations around period health that are actually a little bit more general to kind of open up the debate. So there's been lots in, in newspapers over recent years around period poverty. So there's 500 million women and girls globally who don't have access to sanitary protection and that has significant impacts on mm. their life. There's even been period poverty in the UK. I think the food banks are finding that sanitary products are some of their most in mm. demand. So period poverty, there's a sustainability issue. So uh, the using of single use period products like uh, tampons and towels, actually what about the sustainable and environmentally friendly alternatives? So the reusable products, there's loads that are available now from cups and reusable pads and period knickers. So there's some really interesting conversations mm. Uh, the, the tampon tax that was eradicated only last year, 5% that women were paying tax on sanitary products, that was finally eradicated. So I think you could have some interesting debates and conversations that show your people that you're not scared of the word period, mm. that you're yeah. not worried about having women in the workplace. And then there are practical things, you know, what's the toilet set up like? Is it kept nice and clean? What's mm. the sanitary disposal units like? Have you thought about providing sanitary products for your, for your staff? You know, periods can start unexpectedly. Um, just putting them in the toilets might be enough of a message to say, hey, look, it's, it's okay, mm. we're, we're kind of on your side. So I think there are some practical things. I think there's some kind of positioning things and those kind of conversational things to allow women to know that it's okay to have their period. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of a right, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. completely fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. 
So I, I think there you've outlined a number of great steps there actually how, how you can normalize it a little bit more in the workplace and then as a line manager just being really open to the discussion as you would be with anything else and, and being flexible and creating the right environment. Thanks Petra, uh, you've given us loads to think about there. Um, so lots of practical steps that we can uh, bring into the workplace. I hope you've enjoyed today's Bite Size Academy. And uh, if you need more help and support, then please check out the Women's Health Hub on boop.co.uk. Thanks very much.